iOS 26 is officially here and publicly available for everyone to download. It's the biggest iOS update we've seen in a really long time. And today I'll be sharing ways to customize your home screen and lock screen setup, new settings that I think you should turn on right away, and some hidden features in iOS 26 that I think you're going to love. Hey everyone, it's Andrew and welcome back to the channel. The first area we're gonna cover is the lock screen and we're gonna look up where we can find the new wallpapers that are in iOS 26. So long pressure lock screen, go to the plus icon, then scroll down to where it says iOS 26. There's five wallpapers. One of them includes all of the other four. So if I tap on here and I go to the bottom, you see dynamic. And if I just slide over, you have shadow, sky, halo, and dusk. And depending on whichever one you want to select, you can just click add. I like dynamic, so we'll go ahead and select add and set pair. And now you have that as your new lock screen wallpaper. If I actually go back into the wallpaper and click customize, I can actually change the size of this clock. If I tap here and see the different fonts, the only font that allows you to move the clock and make it bigger is this first one. The other ones, it won't work. And I also want to point out too, you can make the clock either glassy or solid. So if you prefer a solid look, you can do that, but I'll show you some wallpapers that I think the glass looks really nice with, and I'll make sure to link them in the video's description. Just come here and make the clock longer, and you'll notice with this iOS 26 wallpaper that it adjusts to the clock. Now you have the elongated clock on your home screen, and this will dynamically adjust whenever you have notifications, so the clock will get smaller depending on how many notifications you have and as you scroll up. Another thing I wanna point out is if you make the clock bigger, widgets will be at the bottom, and depending on the wallpaper that you have, the glass effect on the clock makes the wallpaper and everything really stand out. I think it's really nice looking, and I think this wallpaper right here with like a foggy forest just looks awesome, so if I drag it down, it kind of goes into the trees a little bit and just looks incredible. Another thing you can do in iOS 26 is you can create a spatial scene and make a 3D wallpaper. So if I go and long press my lock screen and hit the plus icon, there's an option here of spatial scenes and you can just select one of them. So I'll go and select this one here and it creates a 3D effect for the wallpaper. So that's one that's already preset and I can use. And let's just say right here, I have this wallpaper. I can actually tap on this icon right here and it'll generate a spatial scene. And now I have a 3D effect wallpaper with these mountains. And if you want to, you can actually go into photos and generate a spatial scene as well with any photo that you want. So just using the same mountain photo, there's an icon here at the top right. I'll go ahead and select on that and it'll generate the spatial scene and it gives that 3D effect a little bit less, I think, than the lock screen, but also pretty cool. If I go in to charge my phone, now on the lock screen, it'll tell you how much time you have left to charge your iPhone. It says 44% charge, and then it says 33 minutes to 80%. For some reason on the lock screen, it's only set to show 80% and not 100, but if you wanna see how long it's gonna take you to get to 100%, just go to settings and then battery, and up at the top, you'll see it's 48% charge. It has 26 minutes till it gets to 80% and an hour and a half until it's at 100%. And while we're here, if you go down to power mode, there's a new toggle called adaptive power. And you can kind of read here, but basically the iPhone's performance will change depending on your usage levels. And I think that's a pretty nice feature to add. There's also a notification that you can turn on and it'll notify you when adaptive power is being used. Now, a quick word from today's sponsor, Taurus. Not only is iOS 16 here, but new iPhones are finally on the way as well, and you're probably going to upgrade, which means I'm sure you'll need an iPhone case. Look no further than the Taurus Q3 Air. It comes in every size for the iPhone 17 lineup, nice aesthetic, beautiful colors, and awesome clicky buttons. It has anti-slip sides and feels super comfortable in hand, and what makes this unique is Taurus's original rotating magnetic stand design. I've used a lot of cases with similar stands and no one does it like them. Just fold it down, twist it 360 degrees however you like and consume content any way you want. It's also insanely durable with this new gen shock mat tech and dynamic airbags. So if your phone falls, it's actually protected. It's got a raised camera lip and raised edges for the screen. And I love that it gives protection without adding extra bulk. You can slap on a minimal wireless charger as well if you need an extra charge. 
Make sure to protect your iPhone 17 today. Check out the case in the description and the pinned comment below. One last thing about the lock screen that I wanna point out is if I go into Apple Music and I click on this album right here and just play this song, on the lock screen, it'll make this album artwork full size. It takes up the entire screen real estate, which I think looks really cool. Now, if you have an album that doesn't have full screen, it just looks like the old way of Apple Music. It has the time and date up at the top, which I still think looks really clean aesthetically. Now on the home screen, I think one of the coolest things they did this year was changing the icons. So all of the icons have a slight adjustment to them. These are the icons and widgets that I use, but if I want to adjust the color or make it dark mode or anything like that, all I have to do is long press the home screen, tap edit and go to customize. And when I go to customize, I have a few different options. Right here, I can make it the default, which it is right now. My phone's in dark mode, so that's why the widgets are dark, but then I can make all of the apps dark as well. So I'll go ahead and select that. And I think that looks really aesthetically clean. And one thing that I've really enjoyed to use is the clear option. So you can tap on clear. And when you tap on clear, it makes everything more transparent and clear, but you can also turn on dark clear. And I think that makes this setup look really nice. Tinted also got an update. There's more flexibility with what you can do. So you can adjust more color and find the right thing for you. And you can also use the Apple intelligence symbol that will kind of adjust it for you. But just going back to clear, I think the light mode on this one looks pretty nice. And so that's what I've landed with. If I go into Apple Music, if you go to the plus icon here under your library and playlists, and then you can actually create a new folder and you can name it and then put other playlists into a single folder and just separate out your music even more. So let's just say this one is instrumental create. And from there within the folder, I can create another playlist or create another folder within this folder and you can go wild with it. And this is what it'll show up as in playlists. Now, one other thing about Apple Music is that you can add pins now. So if I'm in my library, you can see there's a pin for different albums that I have here. So let me just remove one really quick and I'll show you how to add it. So if I go to this album right here and I select this song and I just tap on pin song, that will show up in my library right here. And the cool thing is if I go into the home screen, long press and I go to edit, and then add widget. If I go to Apple Music or just search for music and scroll down over to the right, there you can see here there's an option for pins. There's a medium and a large widget. And if I just select the medium right here, I'll click add widget and that'll put the pin songs that I have into my home screen, which I think is also really nice. And one last thing about Apple Music, if we go into settings and just look for music, so you might have to search for it. So just search for music and scroll down to where it says song transitions. And you can actually turn this feature off or on if you want, but it should automatically be on for you. But this is song transitions and it'll actually create an audio mix, very similar to crossfade, but the beat and tempo kind of forms into the next song. And I've used this pretty extensively and I really like this feature. We'll get into a lot of settings now. So in your camera settings, if you scroll down, there's an option for lens cleaning hints. So it'll just tell you if you need to clean your camera lens. And this is something that I think a lot of people forget about to take better photos. If there's smudginess on the camera, this will actually give you a reminder. Hey, your lens is dirty, probably should clean it which I think is really nice. Someone like my mom that will really love. If you go to cellular and set up cellular, so this phone right now is not on eSIM, but if I go to set up cellular, I now see an option of transfer from Android, making it switching from Android a lot easier. And actually when I put my eSIM into my Pixel, it was a lot easier as well. So it looks like both sides are making it easier for people to switch. In the phone settings, there's a couple of settings that you can turn on. So there's hold assist detection. So this will automatically detect when you are placed on hold. So you can step away from your iPhone and it'll be notified when someone actually gets back on the phone. This is great sometimes, especially like calling a bank. It can take a while for them to answer the phone. And so this is gonna be great. You don't have to waste your time just sitting there twiddling your thumbs, listening to that really annoying phone music. Now there's also screening unknown callers. 
you have a couple different options for this. So never ask a reason for calling in silence. So each one of these goes into detail and I ask for a reason for call. So calls from an unsaved number will be asked a reason for information before the iPhone rings. If it's okay, I'll go ahead and look at it and accept the call. But if not, I'll go ahead and just ignore it. Inaccessibility under display and text size. If the readability is just, it's not very good for you and you kind of want to tone down liquid glass, there's not really a way to shut it off, but you can turn on reduced transparency. And when you do, it just makes those areas that aren't really legible a little bit different. So you can see here, like it took away liquid glass from my home screen and it makes control center not have any liquid glass elements at all. Whenever you're using a focus mode, if you have multiple SIMs, you can actually filter out the specific SIM that you want to not be reached by. So I don't actually have a SIM in this phone, but if I had multiple, I would be able to select which focus filter. Maybe I want to shut off getting calls or anything like that, which is pretty cool. Under sounds and haptics, there's a new ringtone. So if I go into here, and I select reflection. Reflection is that classic kind of annoying ringtone that Apple has had pretty much since day one. But if I go in here, there's the default, which sounds like this. But now there's a few different options that sound really cool. So I'll play a short snippet of each one. And this one reflected is probably my favorite and the one I'll go with. And then here's Surge. But yeah, I think reflected sounds good. So I'll go ahead and stick with that one. In Control Center, there's not much different, but if I go down here and just wanna add a new control, there's now an option to add a reminder. So I'll go ahead and select new reminder right here. And when I tap on it, it gives me an option to add that reminder. So I'll go ahead and add iPhone pre-order and go ahead and add that and the reminder has been added to my reminder list. In Apple Podcasts, there's two new things that I wanna call out. If I go right here and select the One X, there's actually more adjustable playback speed. There's 0.8 all the way up to, if you scroll to 3X, which I don't know if you're gonna ever be listening to something that fast, but you can. And then right here, there's also the option of enhancing the dialogue, something we saw in Apple TV, but now it's coming to the Apple Podcasts app as well. For your alarm settings, you can actually change your snooze duration. Now, it only used to be nine minutes, but you can change it from nine to one minute or all the way up to 15 minutes. Something that might annoy you is to get to other tabs within Safari, you have to go here. So let's just say I open up Apple Newsroom and then I go here. I have to open up a new tab this way. So I'll go to all tabs and then I can create another one. And let's just say I wanna open up Mac Rumors. There's actually a really nice thing you can do right here. You can just go right here and open up all tabs. So it's a swipe gesture. You don't actually have to tap twice. You can just pull it up there. When it comes to customizing your contact or your contacts, so I'm looking at my contact here and there's just a lot more options to customize the look and the poster if I wanna share it with someone. And now you have more options for that, which I guess is pretty cool. And I think this one looks pretty sick, so I'll go ahead and update it. Now, one of the really cool things in iOS 26 for iMessage is you can change the background of your group chat or iMessage chat with another person. And all you have to do is go into the individual. It should be defaulted to none since you don't have anything yet. So you can do photos from your own photo library, colors, ask Apple intelligence, do sky, water, and aura. And within each one of these, you can make changes as well. It also has suggestions that it gives you. Well, let's just say I choose aura. So there's green, there's purple and there's pink. And let's just do green for this one. This is what the background looks like. Under info in iMessage, if you scroll down, there's a new automatically translate option. So I'll go ahead and turn that on. And this has been really great. My wife is from Brazil and her family, although they speak great English, they mostly want to speak in Portuguese. And in a group chat, it can sometimes turn into Portuguese. And so this actually really helps me out understand what they're saying and the nuance of how they're saying it into English for me. And for them, when I say something in English, it shows up in 
Portuguese for them, which is great. So I'll go ahead and select this one. It does take a little bit of time to download, but I'll show you an example of what it looks like. So here's an example of asking my family group, is it still translated to Portuguese? And you can see up there, it shows it in Portuguese as well. For some reason, I'm having to download it in English again, so that's maybe why it didn't translate hers. This is actually a really game-changing feature for me, and I've really enjoyed using it. If I wanna select a certain text within a huge message like this one here, I can actually long press on the message, scroll down and select, and let's just say I want the very bottom part to copy. Let's just say like that part. And go here select it copy and i don't have to have the entire message like we used to and that's 26 tips hidden settings and new customizations you can do in ios 26. if you like this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel i'm getting the new iphone 17 series this week so i'm excited to do all the reviews for that and subscribe because i'll be giving ios 26 beta updates so whenever ios 26.1 comes out I'll be sure to be posting short videos for that as well. If there's a feature we should all be aware of, let us know in the comment section below. We'd love to hear about it. As always, guys, thanks for watching. God bless. And I will see you on the next video.